Hello everyone, welcome again. In this lecture, we are going to start our last topic of ACCF 6 taxation, which is value added tax. Now, value added tax is paid by the businesses normally. So, if you are a registered business for value added tax purposes, then you will be charging value added tax on most goods and services. If I have accounting press, uh, if I have accountancy practice within the UK, and whenever I am providing services to my clients, I am charging a value added tax on the services which I am providing. So, on top of what I am charging for the services, I am charging 20% value added tax as well. Now, this value tax I'm not keeping in my own pocket, although the fees is going in my pocket. But this 20% which the customer is paying on top of my fee, this will go to HMRC. So basically, I'm collecting value tax on the behalf of a HM revenue custom. So I will pay to HMRC, which means it is an indirect tax because a client is not paying directly to HMRC. Client is paying to HMRC via myself. So it is going to HMRC indirectly, not directly. So that's why it is uh, uh, indirect tax. Now, if I have a business, so I am charging value tax, but I will have some expenses as well. I will have some purchases and I will have some expenses as well. Now, when I am incurring some expenses, I will be paying some value tax on the purchases and expenses which I am incurring. So them expenses uh, which I am doing in the in course of my business, if I am paying any value tax on them, that value tax is called uh, input value tax, whereas the input tax which I am, whereas the uh, value tax which I am charging from my customers, uh, that will be output tax which is charged on the sales. So there is one value tax which is charged on the sales, that is output value tax, whereas the other uh, value tax which I charge on my purchases, so which I am being charged on my purchases, that is input value tax. Now that tax I am collecting and I am paying to HMRC. But this tax, value tax, which I pay on purchases, I am paying to the supplier and he is paying to HMRC. When I will make my own accounts, I will put output tax, then I will deduct input tax out of that. Whatever the net amount is going to be, that is the amount which I will pay to HMRC. Right? So if my you know, tax which I have paid, value tax which I have paid on my purchases uh, exceeds the tax which I have collected, then you know I will have a more tax collected and I will have more I will have had a more tax paid to uh, the paid to the HMRC so that's why then I will ask HMRC that please recover me because I have overpaid it all right so uh, there are lots of other things as well so I will just quickly share the screen with you and then we will uh, read the notes and we will discuss few things together the most common thing, uh, if, I, if you are living in the UK, you might already know about value tax anyway because, uh, you know, when you go to the fuel station, you put the fuel in, um, you, you're paying 20% value tax on that, All right? So, uh, as you can see on your screen, it is value tax on uh, page number 62 of your lecture notes. Just give me one second while I open the notes as well. So, it is page number 62 of lecture notes. Just bear me one second. B6. Yep. Here it is, uh, page number 62 of your lecture notes. Uh, chapter number 27 and chapter number 28 is on value added tax. It says a value tax is uh, charged on a taxable supply of goods and services within the UK by taxable persons in course of their business. All right. So if you are a registered business, as I said, you might be charging value added tax because you are registered for value added tax purposes. All right. Now, there are three kinds of supplies uh, for value added tax purposes. One is called standard rated supply, other one is zero rated supply, and the last one is exempt supply. Now, what is exempt supply? If you're dealing with these stuff, which says, uh, you know, banking services, insurance, health services, betting and gambling, a uh, non-profit organization, uh, sorry, non-profit uh, non making education. So if you're dealing with this stuff, 
Uh, it is uh, exempt for value to tax purposes, so you won't be charging any value to tax on that. Second thing is zero rated supply. Uh, you know, if you are selling this stuff, like books and non luxury foods, uh, then drugs and medicine, uh, children clothes and footwear, so these things, you won't be charging any, um, you, you, uh, sorry, you will be charging value to tax at the rate of 0%. So basically, it is exactly the same thing. In the exempt case, you won't be charging anything. Whereas in the zero rated case, you will be charging the value tax, but you will be charging the at the rate of 0%. So basically, it is exactly the same thing, but there is a major difference when it comes to registration. Now, zero rated person can register for value tax. However, exempt person cannot register for value tax. So if you're dealing with the stuff which is exempt for value tax purposes, then you cannot register for value tax. However, on the other hand, if you are selling or if you are dealing with zero rated supplies, then you can <coughs> excuse me, then you can uh, mm, uh, you can register for value tax purposes. However, you will be charging a value tax at the rate of zero percent. Then the last supply is a standard rated, which is at the rate of twenty percent on most goods and services. Now, standard rate is fine; it is twenty percent, but the you know, the, there's, there are complications about zero rated and exempt supplies because in, most, in both cases, it is, we, are, we, don't, we are not charging any value tax anyway. So zero rated is at the rate of 0%, exempt is also at the rate of 0% because it is exempt, right? Now most people confuse uh, what is the difference between these two things. As I said earlier as well, only difference is with regards to registration. Person who is zero rated, uh, who is uh, uh, dealing with the zero rated supplies can register themselves for value rated tax purposes, whereas someone who is dealing with exempt supplies cannot register themselves for value rated tax purposes. So that is the only difference. Another question arises after that: that why would someone be willing to register for value tax? Because we know that when you are registered for value rated tax purposes, you will be paying uh, value rated tax and you will be charging value rated tax as well. Now, why would someone want to register for value tax purposes if they are dealing with zero rated supplies? Now, zero rated supplies is from business perspective. So if I am, say, for example, selling books, I won't be charging any value tax. So my output tax is going to be zero. When my output tax is going to be zero, why would I want to be registered for value tax purposes? Reason why would I want to be interested in uh, being registered for value tax purposes is because I will be incurring some expenses. Now, them expenses which I'm incurring on purchases and the value tax which I'm paying, that will only be recoverable if I'm registered for value tax purposes. If I'm not registered for value tax purposes, then I won't be able to recover it. All right? So you will have to see what are the benefits that only then you will advise your client that get registered for value tax purposes or not. So you'll have to see the you know, benefits of that. However, you know, uh, if you are dealing with zero rate supply and you are doing a lot of expenses and you're paying a lot of uh, uh, va value tax on the purchases as well, then you better register for value tax purposes that you will be able to recover the, uh, you know, input value tax. Right. Now after that, it says basic computation. So it is a way to calculate it. Uh, output VAT is the VAT which uh, is charged on the sales, as I said earlier. And input tax is uh, paid on the purchases. So whatever the difference will be, we will pay either to we will either pay to HMRC or we will recover from HMRC if we have overpaid it. All right. Note that exempt supplies cannot recover. Exempt supplier cannot recover input VAT and must shoulder the burden of value tax paid. So as I said earlier, uh, exempt supplier cannot recover the value tax purposes. This is the only reason that zero rate supplier would be interested in getting registered. Now, what is the value of supply? Value of supply is VAT exclusive price, which will, which will be the price of the goods or services plus VAT. So it is VAT inclusive price, uh, which is called value of supply. Now, how to calculate the value of tax? So it is at the rate of 20%, standard rate is 20%. So it will tell you that this is the price, this is the price of the goods. Tell me 20% VAT, how much it will be. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, value of the goods or services multiplied by 20% that is our value tax. Sometimes the examiner gives you VAT inclusive price so it will give you a price say for example 120 pounds and it will say that 20% uh, VAT is included in this price. How to get the value tax uh, out of that? So uh, it will uh, if you just look beneath that 
it says VAT inclusive price multiplied by 20 over 120 because uh, you know VAT rate is 20 so it will be 20 over 120 because it is inclusive of value tax so that's that's the way to calculate it now I can also ask you that this is the price 120 pounds please tell me what would be the VAT exclusive price right so one way is you can do 20 over 120 so that will be your VAT you will deduct this VAT out of the price of the goods or services that is one way or other ways to directly calculate 120 multiplied by 100 over 120 that is also a way to calculate it a quick way to do it All right so who must register for a value tax that is registration on next page a compulsory registration there are two tests and uh, you must check these tests and uh, then you will uh, you will have to get registered for value tax purposes one is historic test so you must look for previous 12 months so registration is complete uh, registration is compulsory sorry if at the end of any month taxable supplies over the previous 12 months have exceeded limit of 83000 pounds so basically registration limit is 83000 pounds so you will have to check at the end of every month so you will have to check previous 12 months so in the <coughs> excuse me at any point if the previous 12 months sales exceeds uh, 83,000 £83, pounds, then you must register for value tax purposes. Taxable supplies the VAT exclusive value of all zero rated and standard rated supplies. All right. So even all of your supplies are zero rated and its value is over 83,000 pounds, then you must register as well. So that is compulsory registration that you have no choice. You do not have any choice. You have to re get registered. All right. Now the person must notify HMRC within 30 days when they know that they, they have exceeded the limit and they will be regarded as registered from uh, first of next month. Uh, next test is a future test. It is also compulsory registration. So at any point if you think that uh, you know uh, your taxable supplies will exceed 83,000 pounds then uh, you will have to get registered this compulsory registration as well. Uh, a person is also liable to be registered if at any point there are reasonable grounds for believing that his uh, taxable, turn, uh, taxable supplies will exceed 83,000 pounds in the following, uh, following 30 days. Right? So again, uh, if you think that within the next 30 days, uh, you know, it will exceed, your taxable supplies will exceed 83,000 pounds, then you must, must get registered for value tax purposes. Right? Right, the next one is a voluntary regist registration. Now, even if you have not uh, exceeded the limit, you still want to get registered, you can do so. Right, that previous one was compulsory registration, whereas this one is voluntary. So, it's up to you if you want to get registered. Now, even if your taxable supplies are less than 83,000 pounds threshold, you are willing to get registered, then you can do so. Uh, it is up to you. But the question is, why would someone want to get registered again? Because they will be able to claim uh, the tax which they have paid on the purchases. So that is the only reason they will be registered in getting registered. Uh, sorry, they will be willing in getting registered. Right, then group registration. Now, if there are you know, different companies within the group, then they can arrange to be uh, make only, uh, they can arrange uh, to be only one entity for the VAT purposes, right? So what would happen is that there are few companies within the group. They will be regarded as only one entity for value tax purposes. So they will be paying tax, uh, you know, all together. Uh, the reason is the benefits, or there are few benefits because, you know, if there are few companies who are registered within the group, uh, they will be, you know, doing, uh, they will be, uh, you know, filling the VAT return. They will be doing some administrative work and then they will be in contact with the HMRC as well. So it is a lot of hassle. What they will do is because there will be a few companies, only one company then will submit a single VAT return. So they will be uh, called a representative member. So they will be making the return of all of the group and they will be in the contact of, uh, they will be in the contact with HMRC. Uh, companies under common control may apply for group registration. Two or more companies are eligible to be treated as members of the group provided each of them is established in the UK and one of them controls each other uh, or one person either it is individual or a company controls all of them or two persons 
or more than that, carrying on a partnership business, uh, they can also get reduced to it. Now, what are the effects and benefits? Uh, each VAT group must appoint a representative member uh, who must account for the group's VAT output and input VAT. Right? Uh, it will simplify the process, as I said earlier, and uh, allowing payments and repayments of VAT to be netted off. Uh, any supply of goods or services by a VAT, uh, by a member of the group, uh, by a member, one member of the group to the another member, it will be disregarded uh, for, you know, for value added tax purposes. So when one person within the group is selling anything to the other group member, they won't charge any value added tax and, uh, you know, other way around as well. Any application to create, terminate, add or remove any company can be made any, at any time. So if you want to add any company within the group for uh, you know, VAT purposes, you can do so anytime. And if you want to take any, any company out of that, you can do so uh, at any time as well. All right, next is a deregistration. A deregistration limit is 81,000 pounds, whereas the registration limit was 83,000 pounds. All right, and in this case as well, there is compulsory deregistration and a voluntary deregistration. Now, in compulsory deregistration, de it says a trader may be compulsory deregistered if HMRC is satisfied that they no longer intend to make any taxable supplies. A trader must notify HMRC within 30 days of the following of the day, ceasing to make taxable supplies. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in voluntary registration, if you can satisfy HMRC that your you know, taxable supplies will not exceed 81,000 uh, pounds, then you know you will be get registered, deregistered. Hey, consequences of uh, deregistration, if you get uh, deregistered, what would be the consequences? Now on deregistration, because you, was, you were already registered for value tax purposes and now you are saying to HMRC, I want to get deregistered. HMRC will say, whatever you have got in the stocks, whatever you have got in the stocks and you have claimed any value tax on that, if you have claimed any input value tax on that, you will have to pay back to us unless if it is less than thousand pounds. Right? So it says uh, on deregistration, VAT is chargeable on all stocks and capital assets in the business on which input tax was claimed. Uh, if chargeable VAT is less than thousand pounds, it does not need to be repaid. This rule does not apply if the business is sold as a going concern to another tax person, taxable person. Right? So then it says uh, VAT periods. Now, VAT period is normally three months, so it is a quarter is called a VAT period. So after every three months, it is a VAT period. So VAT period, also known as tax period, is a period covered by the VAT return. It is usually three calendar months. VAT return, along with payments, must be submitted and VAT must be paid electronically within uh, one month and seven days after the end of the VAT period. So basically, VAT period is within three months and you must submit the VAT return and pay the VAT uh, one month and seven days after the end of accounting, uh, after, after the end of the VAT period. Right? Now, VAT return again means like the income tax return and corporation tax return. VAT return is a summary of calculations, so it is not a payment. There is a difference between VAT payment and VAT return. VAT return is just a summary of uh, information, so you will fill the form where you will state you have got this much uh, value tax on in output. Uh, I mean, you have got this much output VAT, this, you, this much input VAT, that is net amount and that is amount which you will pay to HMRC. Now it will be detailed, so you will have, you will have all of the different things which you have bought, on which you have paid value tax and all of the things which you have sold and you have charged any value tax on that. So it will be a detailed calculation of the value tax that you will have to submit to HMRC and after that you will have to pay, make payment according to that. Uh, certain businesses may submit a annual, an annual VAT return under the annual accounting scheme. Now normally VAT period is three months long and you have to submit the VAT return and make the payment within one month and seven days after that, after every accounting period, after, sorry, after every VAT period. However, certain businesses may choose to make only single VAT return under the annual accounting scheme. Now what is annual accounting scheme? It says see later. Let's go back, uh, let's go to the annual accounting scheme now. On page 68 of your lecture notes, which is last page of, of our notes, you can see three schemes here. 
one is called annual accounting scheme so we are reading this scheme so if you join this scheme what is the benefit that you only have to submit one single VAT return but there are certain things certain conditions to be satisfied in order to join the scheme what are these conditions let's see an annual accounting scheme is available where a single VAT return is filed for 12 months period normally the accounting period of the month uh, of the of the business the annual return must be filed within two months after the end of the return period normally nine payments on account will be made so it will be each on 10 percent of the previous uh, year's net VAT liability so you will have to make nine payments on account and then you'll have to make the balancing payment as well like uh, like we do for income tax purposes all right so we make different payments one is you know payment in account then payment in, on account and then the balancing payment as well <coughs> excuse me so a balancing payment or repayment is made when the return is filed a trader can join the scheme if taxable turnover for uh, the 12 months starting on the application to join the scheme is not expected to exceed 1.35 million if taxable turnover exceeds 1.6 million then you must leave this scheme you will have to exit from this scheme all right so if you are taxable um, you know if your taxable supplies are expected to be less than 1.35 million uh, then you can join this scheme and you will have to leave if you uh, if you exceed 1.6 million now this same limit will apply to the other scheme as well 1.35 million and 1.6 million this same limit joining limit and ex exit limit applies to cash accounting scheme now what is cash accounting scheme now cash accounting scheme is that you will have to pay uh, VAT and charge VAT on the cash basis rather than on receipt basis or accrual basis normally what happens is that when you uh, when you charge a VAT when you when you sell something to a customer you will have to charge value tax on that regardless of when the customer is going to pay you now customer might pay you after one year but you have to pay that output VAT to HMRC after three months anyway which, which is a VAT period now after one year if customer did not pay you if customer gone bad debt then what would happen because you have already paid to HMRC then you can recover from HMRC if it has been more than six months uh, you know since the due payment due date however under cash accounting scheme it's not like that it is it says that whenever the customer pays you or you pay to supplier you will have to charge VAT on the cash basis not on the invoice basis or accrual basis so that is the benefit which means the major benefit in this scheme is that you will get automatic bad debt relief because whenever the customer pays you you only have to pay HMRC then if customer did not pay you you don't have to pay HMRC I'm talking about the VAT right so according to this scheme a VAT is accounted for on the basis of cash receipts and payments rather than the basis of <coughs> excuse me invoices issued and received therefore automatic bad debt relief the following conditions must be satisfied now these conditions are exactly the same like annual accounting scheme so taxable turnover does not exceed a uh, 1.35 million per annum and if it exceeds 1.6 million you must leave this scheme all right if your business is small and too small then you must join this scheme which is known as flat rate scheme and good news is that you will have to pay a reduced rate of uh, a reduced rate of value tax depending on which industry your business falls in and another benefit is that if you are joining now in the first year of joining you will get one percent reduction as well in the flat rate so whatever the flat rate of your industry is say for example if it is 12 percent in the first year you will have to pay at the rate of uh, 11 percent another good news is that uh, you will not have to you know uh, worry about a lot of administration you won't have to charge output VAT, input VAT, and blah 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 this stuff so you will be free from that as well however there is a limit so if your taxable turnover is 150,000 pounds up to 150,000 pounds so 150,000 pounds or less than that you can join this scheme and you must leave this scheme if it exceeds 230,000 pounds which means uh, it, only you know small businesses can join this scheme not big businesses right then so 
how to calculate the flat rate sales which will be VAT inclusive price multiplied by the, by the flat rate which will be the industry rate that will be the amount which will be paid to HMRC now this is the straight amount which will be paid to HMRC so you will take the sales value which, and you will include standard rate of VAT into it so if the sales value is 100 pounds plus 20 percent VAT on it that is 120 pounds that is VAT inclusive price now on VAT inclusive price you will have to cha charge flat rate of VAT after charging flat rate of VAT that is the amount you will have to pay to HMRC that is that's it you don't have to do anything with the output ta tax or input tax or something like that because you won't be able to recover anything from HMRC you just have to pay to HMRC right now so in some cases uh, whenever a client comes to your office you will have to see carefully in some cases it looks like that flat rate is good for them but it is not because they are incurring lots of expenses on purchases because if they join the flat rate scheme they won't be able to recover any expense any any uh, input VAT so sometimes it looks like it is better for them to join flat rate scheme but be careful before advising them uh, because sometimes uh, they are better off not joining the flat rate scheme because they won't be able to recover value or tax on that so before advising your client to join the flat rate scheme please make sure you have a look at their accounts if they are paying too much in the input VAT uh, then you must not advise them to join join the flat rate scheme because they won't be able to recover right so that was our uh, three schemes let's go back to where we were before